Got so much time. Got so much time. One for the beat. Two for the rhyme. Three for the pop. Better hope that it's lime. Four for the people on the floor going crazy. Five, six, seven, and the rest gets easy. One for the beat. Two for the rhyme. Three for the pop. Better hope that it's lime. Four for the people on the floor. Welcome to Keeping Up with the Cardassians, where Rob doesn't pay attention to the order of the show. I'm trying to nap. You're napping on the show? Yeah. That's fair. Nick, Nick's done it several times. You guys so. work I the don't so. nap. I play on what? my laptop. I look at media online. And I Amazon shop. Media. 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 Quote. Unquote. Welcome to Keeping Up with the Cardassians. An affiliate? I think. Of the Odd Pod Media Network. I'm Nick. This is Rob. Joe. I feel like there should be a fourth host there, just the way that worked. And Steve! Just <laughs> Nick. No, we don't need a Steve on this show. We don't need a Steve. Are there any good Steve? We need there? an Arthur. No. We an need Arthur? Arthur? An Arthur. Is he 60? Yes. Yes! Yeah. And he's just angry at everything. Goddamn Odo. Oh, Odo. Stop being a pussy. So anyways, <laughs> we, uh, this is Keeping Up with the Cardassians. We are... Uh, a show that has been doing a rewatch of Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Or a first watch for Joe. A first yes. watch for some of us, a rewatch for others. Uh, today we have two episodes we're going to cover from Season 5. We have a simple investigation, um, an Odo-centric episode. And then we have business as usual, a Quark-centric episode. Uh, we are going to get to those in the second half of the show. Um, we usually, first uh, half hour or so, we normally uh, catch up on what's going on in the world of pop culture and media, what's going on in the lives of these beautiful young men that I'm sitting with. Oh, oh. Beautiful. Just, just much. You're radiant. Well, you're both radiant. You. We catch up, and uh, yeah, we just we just talk. So, anyways, first thing we started with was uh, an affiliate of the OnPod Media Network. And yeah. uh, that might not happen anymore. No. This might be I think it. they're getting rid of us. We are Finally, they listened to the show and said, yeah. oh, man. What yeah, some, hell somebody from Odd Pods heard, heard an episode and was like, uh, we've made a great mistake. <laughs> what the hell have we done? Yeah, we got some bad news. We're no longer going to be an affiliate. What is, what is with their Jason Momoa thing? What yeah. is with their Jason yeah. Momoa obsession? And why does Joe think he's like Paul Rudd? Like, I don't get that. <laughs> I don't think I'm Paul Rudd. He, I just would say he knows it. Yes, I know it. I just think I'm closer to Paul Rudd than I am Jason Momoa. That's true. That tracks. That tracks. Yeah. So, anyways, um, next week we may have a new announcement related to the OddPod Media Network. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. We've got a restraining order on it. It <laughs> just depends. It just depends. So, please stop saying uh, your name. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, uh, anyways, uh, what else is going on, gentlemen? What have you watched this week, Joe? <laughs> what do you you want? The truth. I've watched the slow demise of my. Life. No. That's what I've watched. I'm sorry, Mike. I haven't, haven't really watched anything. Yeah. Um, I watched two episodes of Star Trek. That's good. <laughs> That's a start. That's <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I'm meeting yeah. the bare minimum requirement this week. You know, I think sometimes we have bad weeks, and I think it's important that people know we have bad weeks. Oh, I had a very bad week, so. Let's not come in and, and uh, you know, we're not like a professional show where you just have to put on a face Clearly, all the time. we're not professional. Clearly, we're not. You know, if you're having a bad week, you're having a bad week. But you know what, Joe? We're here to make it better. Thanks. I appreciate it. This is, this is, the, honestly, it's a very good constant in my life. Something that I have to look forward to. Yeah. Something that keeps me, um, you know, in some, some sort of regular schedule. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been a, a very good thing and a, and a, a blessing, honestly. A blessing? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. I know. And also with you. Mm. But I don't think I've watched. You did watch something though. What did I watch? The card season two trailer. Oh yes, I did watch the card. Picard. The card season two trailer, Picard. and I haven't even, I haven't <laughs> even watched season one. It's like or the next generation. Or next generation, but that was a really good trailer. I was. It made me want to go back and, and watch season one of oh. Picard. So Sorry. here's my thing about you watching season two of Picard. Or God! God damn it. I do it every single time. You just gotta stop saying that word. Is it would be <laughs> boink 
question I have is, would you would he understand Q? I'm I'm assuming, you know, you could here. We'll basically sum it up right now. Wasn't Q in an episode? The Q of is DS9? Q. So yeah, he's, yes. He's like a, like yes. In a lot where of he got into, when he where he got in a fight with Cisco. Yeah. And he's like, you're not like Picard. Yeah. Um, Q is in the very first episode of the Next Generation. The whole point is Q is basically following around humanity. They're on trial, and Q thinks humans are terrible human are terrible, terrible human beings. He thinks they're terrible. He thinks they're bad for the world. So they're constantly on trial. So episode one of Star Trek opens with Q putting him on trial. In the middle, there's more of the trial that goes on where they introduce a big villain in the Borg. And then the very last episode of the show is again still the trial of humanity. Spoiler. I'm not going to go into it, but it's we still, lost. It's still the prosecution one. So Picard is still on trial, and it ends. And that's the whole point of the one trailer where they're like, the trial never ended, Picard. You're like, Cubans are still on trial. So Qs exist outside of time, and the, they're basically... So he harassed... He harassed is probably the, the best example of humanity while putting us on trial. Yeah. As opposed to going to Cisco going, hey, bro, why are you euthanizing that planet? Yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Why are you so angry all the time, bro? Because Cisco would punch him. Yeah, exactly. So, like, yeah, he goes to Picard, and Picard's just a good man, right? You yeah. You can't shake Picard. He is solid in his moral uh, character from the beginning. So, anyways, uh, I don't think you need... I don't think you need to. I don't, I don't know. Too Maybe. Much. I don't know. Yeah, I don't need to watch... Uh, next generation to appreciate. I think it would help, but I don't think you need to. And I think there's or not enough time going. Maybe you watch um, Encounter at Farpoint, maybe a few of the Q episodes in the middle, and there you go. Yeah. Just so you can get, well, so you can get Q's personality and, and how he just harasses these poor people. He's, okay. he's incredible. He's yeah. awesome. He's I, a good I get annoyed by Q very quickly. Yeah, he does get annoying after a while. Yeah, he really does. And, yeah. and then because they try to force feed him, like he was annoying the there, and then he got more annoying in Voyager. Yeah, he was pretty annoying. Yeah, though the one episode of Voyager where the one Q wanted to commit suicide, and he well, that was a good. Episode. That was a cool episode. It was exceptions to the rule. I'm sure Discovery had a good episode too. <laughs> yeah, I love how you throw that. Shot in. fired. Shot no, it's fired. It's not terrible. It's just not great. Yeah, we're not going to talk about anyway. It. Um, so did you notice some little things that I think I saw in the trailer? Like, a lot of Star Trek Four things? Yeah, yeah. Because when they're flying around the sun, and it looks like they time travel when they're yeah. doing the slingshot around the sun. Yeah. And then they go back in time to archaic Earth time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it, 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 I, I, I just love the idea. It's like, how are we going to travel through time? And they, they go to Spock. They're like, Spock, you need to calculate this. And he says... Go really freaking fast and get really close. That's how you do it. Like, that just seems like a bad idea. So in Star Trek Four, they did a slingshot around the sun in order to tra- time travel. And they said that, that we've done it before. It must have been off screen because I don't recall them ever doing that in the original series. No. Mm. Yeah. Maybe it had been, yeah, maybe it had been done in the history of, you know. I'm not at that point. Oh. Uh, regardless. Maybe in a book. Maybe. I don't, yeah, it, I don't know how to read. It did look like a good trailer. What did it? did. It Picard. was. Picard! Oh, nice. <laughs> Anything else? Picasso. We're moving Picasso. on. Picasso! We're moving on. Yes. Uh, yeah, so it does look good. Um, and I'm, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. But, you know, there's some other things that happened this week. <laughs> How I Met Your Father. How I Met Your Father. Also known as How I'm Even More Mediocre Than the Final Seasons of How I Met Your Mother. It's the first mm-hmm. couple episodes. Oh, it was so bad. It was very bland. It was very bland, very wooden. Yeah, this, is, this, this one is definitely on my list of things to watch. Because I've seen, I've seen, I've seen How I Met Your Mother. I loved it. The last, the last few seasons. It was Legend, wait for it, Dairy. And I wasn't expecting necessarily a Barney character. I was expecting something, Dairy. something, sorry, something who's extreme like that, not like a carbon copy of it, but something to follow those art. Well, I think the 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 sister is the lesbian sister. Not they haven't really established that yet, though. It seems that way, though. Maybe like she's going to hook hook up and everything. I don't know that Barney was really established as Barney in the first three. Yes, episodes. he was. Yeah, yeah, was. Well, yeah, I guess he was. He, he was full Barney. Yeah, he was. Yeah, because like, right away, Ted introduces him as the dirtbag friend. Yeah, yeah he was Barney from the start. 
But I'll give but, it. I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a little longer. Yeah. I didn't hate it. I, I'm 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 going in very um, cautious I think about all, this. I think we all did. Like it's, try, I'm just like, I feel like I'm walking on eggshells with this show. I think. I, I, I yeah. I did think the ending was interesting for that first episode. Yes. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool tie back. Are we allowed to spoil it for you? No, it's no. Not, yeah, okay. it's a... no, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it this weekend. So uh, yeah. I'll. Yeah. Are they, they're releasing. So they it's three. Are they doing are they doing three at a time? Two. They're doing two they, at a time. They, I think they only released the first two because that's all I've watched. Okay, that, that's okay. why I watched it. Then too. Uh, oh, I, I would say the second episode is better than the first. So two yeah. is it two a week? Then I don't know. I mean, they might have just released two to get it started, and then they're gonna go to one a week. They're just okay. like they do with Peacemaker, they released two or three at yeah. the one point. I still haven't got around to that. I will. Um, but yeah, if I would to rate it like the first episode, I'd probably give like a. Four out of ten. Ooh. Second episode, maybe like a five and a half. Ooh. I gotta get. I gotta let you mentally prepare for it because it, it. Now it's so strange. There's a laugh track. And it oh, just, yeah, it's yeah. so weird now because a lot of those sitcoms or your thirty minute shows don't have a laugh track yeah. anymore. I kind of liked it though. I I saw on Twitter people were complaining about it. I'm not complaining. It was just well, that's really, weird. That's, now. that's uh that's God's complaint department is Twitter. Yeah. It's just, True. it's a sea of people who... It's a sea of negativity. Yeah, sea of negativity. Nobody's ha nobody's ever happy on Twitter. Everybody's got something to fucking bitch about. I don't have anything. I'm, I'm pretty happy. Yeah? On, on Twitter. Am I? Let me look at my Twitter. I don't have Twitter. So Let's see you what... did do on a rant recently. So. I did. That was for fun against a friend, though. We were just joking around. What, what was the rant? Uh, it was just my, my one friend wanted to quit Twitter because they said it was negative all the time. So I just oh. ranted about, like, fake negative stuff. Coldplay gets a lot of crap, but A Rush of Blood to the Head is a great album. Agree. Went to Dearborn Music last night. Records were all picked over. Serves me right for going to a record store a few weeks after Christmas. Uh, agree. Are we just reading? I'm Where's reading my now? tweets. Yes. What I believe makes this country great is we are constantly striving for greatness and acknowledging there is work to do. When you begin with the belief your country is perfect, how can you improve upon that? Those are those are some of my tweets. They're not negative. Remember the one time you called it twatter? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good the twat. Time. Yeah. He said a twat. <laughs> I didn't know what that's the old, verb was that's for. Old, that's old, old school. That's old school. Past tense. That's old school. That's hey, old school. Keep that with the infectious yeah. groove is recording in a few minutes as well. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Right. That's what the Twitter says. Uh, per usual, Nick is doing something else. Yes. You know, I'm doing this because you. Challenged me? No, you didn't. I no, just not really. Challenge. No. I made up my own challenge. So, anyways, how about your father? You know, we'll see. We'll give him a little bit. Yeah, more I'm gonna. I, yeah. I'm. I'm gonna watch it, and I'll watch it all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, but even the even the previews left me like, eh, is this is this even worth my time to watch? But I, I liked how I I loved how I met your mother, and I'm interested in, you know, you know, I'm very I. I rail against franchise reboots and yeah i just i want to see how kind of want to see how bad this is going to be well and you know that's the thing like to be honest the thing about how i met your mother was that first episode was uh near damn near perfect right with mm -hmm. the blue french horn that he steals for robin and yeah he tells her he loved is that the first episode where he says i think i love you or something like I that i think it was the first episode and then then they then they become friends again after that because you know that's that's really aggressive uh, but you like right away. So Ted, as the series goes on, you begin to kind of dislike Ted, right? He becomes a little bit of a scumbag, kind of a jerk, you know. Just annoying. He's like, he's like an anti-hero, right? Um, but that first episode, you are you are invested in his character. You want him to be happy. Him and Robin seem perfect right away. Their chemistry is incredible. Um, and then Ted, and then Lily and and Marshall are great, like. Right away, you love all these characters. I don't know the characters of How I Met Your Father right away. You know, that's the thing. And maybe I, I have the benefit of hindsight looking back because I've already watched How I Met Your Mother. Yeah. But this is kind of the same thing I do feel about Discovery. I don't know these characters. We're in the fourth season, and I have no clue who these characters are, um, except for Burnham. And Saru, let's be fair. Saru a little bit, yeah. But, like, beyond that... And Tilly. Those there's, three. There's not much to them, though. Like, they're... Yeah, the bridge crew is non-existent. Yeah, you don't know who they are. So, anyways. That's what I have to say. Character development. Character yeah. development. Well, there's a lot of room for it, so. Yeah. Yeah. They've done that. 
Oh, it's sad. I, again, with a sitcom, I feel, I don't know how many episodes they're going to do per season, but I think the benefit of, of old school sitcoms was you had 24 episodes to develop characters again. These, yeah. these characters that you're seeing week after week. Um, these 13 episode seasons, yeah. It, it, there's it's the, there's urgency and it feel it, sometimes it feels rushed. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like if you look at the modern Star Trek, they have how many episodes are they? Twelve? Fourteen or Fourteen. so, give or take. So, when you're doing the twenty six or twenty four, you have a lot of time to do the filler episodes. You have an Odo episode. You have a Quark episode. Yeah, yeah, but with these, it's it's always this universe ending theme, and there's no time for. And first of all, that, that gets tiring. When everything is going to kill the universe. Every right. single Every single season. Time. You don't need yep. that. In Picard and Discovery, the whole universe is going to end. Yeah. And there's been none of that so far in Deep Space Nine. We're building up to an impending war. That's it. Yeah. It's not the Next end generation. of the world. Never. I mean, this is the slowest. Borg. Well, the Borg. This is the slowest build up to the big to a big story I've ever seen on a, on a, on a show. I it's mean, just you wait until they resolve it in 15 minutes. No, I'm can you imagine that? Yeah. Uh, everything's fine. Yeah. That's like the finale, and they're like the last fifteen minutes of it. They just oh yeah. Up. Oh wait, that's like Enterprise. Oh, hmm. uh, <laughs> oh, oh freaking a. Uh, but yeah, so you don't have you know, with these arcs that are so dire and everything's the center, the the universe is gonna end. You don't have trials and tribulations. You don't have duet. You don't have those episodes right where you can get to know the second characters. sight. Second. Honestly, you don't. You wouldn't get episodes like we're going to review this week. Yeah, both you're right. of these episodes. They wouldn't have. Let, they wouldn't have made it into thirteen episode season because they really don't advance the main story. That's the problem. Is that the main story is so and it's such a because big you, main story right, too? Because you have such a short period of time, everything has to advance the but, main story. And that's There's the no... thing. Like, how can you care about the main story if you don't care about the characters in the main story? That's true. Exactly. Right. Uh, the, uh, but you don't have the time to really deep dive into these characters yeah. for a whole episode. Well, and that's what's worked for Marvel, right? So that, and that's, again, this goes back to Marvel versus DC. Marvel spent years building up their shared universe, giving their yeah. characters their own movies until they combined them all into one, and then it was a global phenomenon. Right. DC said, oh, wait, they made a movie that combined all the characters and people loved it? Well, let's just do that right off the bat. Yeah, and it like, doesn't work. It doesn't work. I don't There's know no... who the Flash is. I don't know who Aquaman is. I don't. I don't... In this universe, we don't Cyborg, know who we don't know who they are. Because yeah, I mean, the Flash TV. They, the Flash had the TV show, which and the other TV show, which was good for like which the was... first three seasons, right? But and then it, it got, was stellar. The first it got season. really bad. That first season was dope. Dope AF. Ooh, Ooh. Language. Language. you watch that language, language, big boy. Getting hit. Woo. Speaking of DC, Batman, the Batman. Is it is it time what, for a weekly what, the Batman talk? What about the Batman? I know we are weekly. Batman are we talking talk now. about the Batman? I mean, it it. What are we it, talking? It's going to be a week. What? It's going to be a weekly thing until is, it comes out, and then we're and then it's going to be show, shows. The yeah. whole show's going to be dedicated yep. to it. What's happening? What's happening? There's tension. It's building. They released the theme. If you couldn't tell. And it's pretty cool. Ooh. Oh. And Nick just so climaxed. Okay, I have it's one so I good. have one critique. Oh no, of course. Oh you good. Do. Go. It the, the the chord progression is very close to um, the the Imperial March. Okay. The timing, I can see the beats. It goes. Mm, well, you know why? Because it's dwelling in. Uh, mm, 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 it's it's. Yeah. I think it's because we're not in a major key, and I think that's why it sounds that way. This that's a minor key. That, whoa. Sorry. Come people. on. Sorry, we we were banging on our springs. On accident. Uh, well, I wasn't. Other than that, I think I liked everything about it. Okay, so, uh, I, and I said this in the in the text chat, but I'm going to repeat it here. It, what, what I liked about it is it's two songs pushed into one song, but they never completely mesh up together, but they each 
have their own strengths, right? And yeah. it's like the equivalent of the of Batman and Bruce Wayne. It's Bruce, Batman trying to be Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne trying to be Batman, but they can never really mesh together as one. Um, and there's still always this dark brooding element to it. Even like when the music softens up and it's the strings kind of in the middle, there's still this era of tension in there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, gonna, it's a moody theme, which is really good. Mm -hmm. There are two things at the beginning of it, and I'm like, oh, that, that, that took away from what's going on. I'm, I'm going to have to listen to that after the show because I don't know what you're talking about with the bells. I'm so there's like a, there in the Silver middle. Bells. There's like three bell chimes where I'm like, that's just out of place. And it's terrible. It's, uh, I'm say, but maybe maybe in the context of the film, it fits. This is true, but as as as, as standalone, if you listen yeah. to Danny Elfman's theme, or or oh, yeah, uh, yeah. or the theme for Superman, or even um. Hans Zimmer's for Batman Begins. Yeah. Nothing. I mean, that's damn near perfection. Yeah, I agree. I think we have the benefit, though, of seeing those films. Like, I this agree. goes I back to well. what I was saying about How I Met Your Mother, right? Like, I think we look back with rose-colored glasses because we know the, fi the theme so well and we can picture it in the context of the movie. And that changes the way we look at music. No, I agree. You know, like yeah. Superman's first flight. We're, oh God! In Man of Steel, when he takes off, like with that flight music, is incredible. But if you just heard that for the first time without it, maybe it's not. I don't as know. Impactful. That score is by its own might be just freaking it, amazing. It's a great score, but it's a very simplistic score. Like, okay, I love Hans Zimmer. I love what he does. His music is very simplistic. Until you have the benefit of adding in the emotion from what you've seen on film, and then it adds a deeper element to it. It's not like John Williams scores where they can stand completely on their own. Yes. I don't think yes. newer music. I don't think this Batman theme really completely stands on its own. You're not just going to listen to that because there's not really much to it. It's a very simple motif. I would argue that because the little would, what we just listen to, listen to that by its own over it's, and over again. I have. Seems, I've probably listened to it four times. I got. I downloaded it. I download things now. I bought it from iTunes. It's called Wow. Ooh, yeah. Look at you. Look at the. Check out money bags over there. Make it rain. It was ninety nine cents. Make it rain dollar bills. It's not like I have Hulu Live or anything. Hey, 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 hey! hey. <laughs> I do too, my friend. I joined the club. You did? Yeah, I did. It's a thing of beauty. It's a thing of beauty. Rob needs that login. Oh wait, no, he doesn't. No, not that's at all. A, that's against the law. Breaking yeah, the he, law. He needs his own law. login. Yeah, he does. His own Kenny logins. Nice. Better be careful because that's the highway to the danger zone by giving them that login. But so going back to Man of Steel real quick, that theme of what are you gonna do when you're not saving the world? That that track, I think it's emotional on its own. Like when I walked out of Man of Steel, I didn't think it was a great movie first. I thought that score was lights out. Yeah. Yeah. The score made the movie and or maybe the movie made the score. I don't know. What, what does it do? What's it I think the score heightened the movie. Because here's the thing. The Batman eighty nine theme is absolutely incredible. But it's so incredible because you can picture the Gotham City behind that theme, right? Until you've seen the movie, like like that Gotham City just immediately pops into my head now. Um, yeah. With the gargoyles and the Art Deco style with that theme. Without seeing any of that, is it as impactful? I don't know. I don't know if it is. No, I, I don't think it is. I think I think to truly appreciate what that theme is... Or what it's trying to be, or everything it can be. I think we need the film, and I think that's okay. But, but on its own, on its own, as from what we know about the film so far, I th I think that thematically this is a great theme. Yes, it fits. It's a great theme. I'm excited to see how it fits in the actual film. Uh huh. And I think I think they will each enhance each other. I would. And agree. then after afterwards, I think it'll will understand its. I think we'll understand the context of it better after we see the movie. Yeah. There is the other thing about the Batman. Almost three hours? Three hours long. Now, I know, I know that recently I've said we need to go back to like 100-minute <laughs> 100, 100 movies or something. Rewinding. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm not upset about it. I'm not upset about the runtime. At all. Especially because what it, sort of film it sounds like it's going to be. It's yeah, not like it, it, it might be the time. Yeah. It sounds like a very plotting film. Like, it's not going to... And so, for me, I'm going I'm going to go in there with the expectations that it's going to be a slower-paced film. So, I'm not... I'm probably not... Unless it's, like, just 
achingly slow. Yeah. I probably won't. That probably won't be a critique, as it as it was as it has been for other films. Mm -hmm. um, pacing sometimes Mar Marvel has issues. Uh, to me, Marvel has issues with pacing <gasps> their films too quickly, and they're still two. They're still two hours plus, but like they're fitting like four hours worth of stuff. It, it just it goes so fast. Yeah. I'm. I'm, I'm I think I'm going to enjoy sitting down and taking in a two hour and 45 minute film that seems to fill up everything with, uh, it, it looks like a good story. I didn't, I don't know if this is accurate, but I had read something recently that someone compared, that someone said Seven was a, oh, an influence on this movie. Seven? Oh, the movie Seven? Seven? Did you read that? Seven in the Batman universe would be Did you read that uh, someone said that it, it, Batman is almost a horror film? The Batman, the, the, that it, it seems like almost a horror film. Oh, really? Yeah. Which would fit I, with the seven vibes, because you'd think that's almost a horror film, but yeah. it's not. No. But, but, but yeah, I read I read that, and then I read um, that... David Fincher's Batman. Terrifying. And then I, re then I read that um, they've done the, like, the, like the quality control, and they, they're mind blown well, the, yeah, about I, what the Batman is so far. I thought they, they were talking about more like the sound, the Dolby Atmos. Yeah, and, but like... Oh, I can't wait. But that's to me. That's part of the film. Oh, like, I agree. But, you get the the visuals, right? What the the visual story they're telling, but the you you have to set the viewer in which, in that universe, which is why you don't watch releases on an iPhone <laughs> or an iPad. Hey, at least I watched you go Matrix because no one to, else did. This, yeah. No one else did. Uh, you go to the theater. Okay. So we're going to go to the theater, we're going to watch this movie, and we're going to create sheets on over and under, and we're going to make bets against each other, like the over and under on the time frame Batman will appear, like first 15 minutes. Are you going to take the over and under on that? I would take the under on that. I think Batman's going to appear really quickly in this So film. do I. Oh, ba ba the character Batman? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would take I would take the under. Yeah, I'm taking well, the under. Over under 15, 15 minutes? That's... Uh, I don't know. So we got the opening credits. Well, the my I'm gonna go under. I, I'll, I'll, I'll actually, I'll take the over. Take the over on that. Yep. One. Um, the appearance of of. Are we gonna write these down? Yeah, we're gonna. We're, we'll, you, I can't. Read, we'll we'll can't do this. We'll do this. This will be next. This, that this is the week before the movie. We'll do this. Okay. It'll be okay, on so, the podcast. We're gonna do that. All right. So leading up to the movie, we have to write out. Let's say. Ten prop bets about the ten movie. prop bets. Okay, and then we will, and then the week before we see the movie on the show, we'll go over our ten prop bets, and we'll all take, we'll all make our bets, and then after the after we see the movie during our review, we'll go over our prop bets and see we'll who back. is the real Batman winner. So, while while I'm thinking about it, I am if I can, I'm going to do the auditorium right now again. Where was this at? Uh, it was unfortunately it was in Sterling Heights, but. MJR Westline does do it. Yeah. But you have to get them at the, the exact time that they're booking it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all about timing. Yeah, so yeah. I will, if I can, I'm going to. Okay. I mean, they have smaller ones now you can do, like the the Palladium in downtown Birmingham, like has small. But they check your credit to go in that city. Yeah, I know, but yeah. there are theaters <laughs> yeah. where you can fit 20 in there. So therefore, it feels like the thing about running a giant theater is when you have 20 people in a theater of 200, that feels a little. Uh, it detracts a little oh, bit. I agree. If you get a smaller theater, but then again, the screen isn't that big, so screw that either. Screw that too. That's yeah. where I'm struggling. Is... I want an Emax, man. I want uh, or IMAX. I want IMAX. Well, the one in Westland here, or Canton, technically, is the largest screen in Michigan. Really? Over the one in uh, Novi? That's what I was. That I read. I pull up largest screen in Michigan, and they said Emax. So Westland. are we? Are we not going to the? Theater is because... five large? No. No. Are we? Are we not going to the theater because of COVID? Is that why we're... Well, yeah. some people that want to go see it, that are interested in seeing with me, particularly because of my love affair with Batman, some people are worried about it. That, that's fair. Um, that's very and, fair. And can, we, can we go as a show to a full theater? I was thinking... And then... Off recording, we'll talk. <laughs> okay. All right, let's we'll, talk. we'll cut that. We'll edit that yeah. in post. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, moving Nothing on from Batman, fun. because we could talk about Batman all day. I just watched a movie last night on Netflix that I think you all should watch, and it's called The Hunt for the Wilder People. You might absolutely hate it. I don't know. You might hate it. I don't really know your taste. In it. It's Takai Waititi. Like, it's, he's written and directed this mm -hmm. movie. The guy is incredible, and it's, a, it's with Sam Neill in it. 
Um, and it's set in New Zealand, and it's about this 13-year-old boy who gets a, who gets adopted by this mom and this dad. And the dad is, like, really closed off. The mom is really sweet. But it's, like, about this... And they go on this big adventure in the bushlands of New, New Zealand. And I've never enjoyed a movie so much. Why did you enjoy it? Uh, it's got a lot of heart. Like, it was it was very heartwarming. It was hilarious. It was I'll really, take hilarious, heartwarming. No, not interested. It was... It, I, 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 like... You know, I'm one of those weird guys who likes the indie flicks, too. Like, the independent flicks that yeah. nothing much happens but conversation. I like those movies. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Sam Deal, man. It's Dr. Not Ian Malcolm, because that's uh, Jeff Goldblum. I don't know. It's Sam, it's Sam Neill from Jurassic Park. Yeah, we're aware. Sam Neill. So what would you rate it? You would Nine out of ten. Oh, Jesus. It's really good. Wow. Okay. That's uh, highly recommended. It's really good. Yeah, that's up there. It's really good. I liked it a lot. So, anyways, that's it. That's all I got for you today. Last thing I have is 2022. Oh, yeah. Wants celebrities dead. Yeah. Now, we are on the precipice of a lot of these uh, stars going down. Yes, we are. Uh, because there are a lot of folks who are legends that are alive but are on borrowed time. So just be prepared. 2022 has already started out. Uh, it was so eager to... It, 2022 was so eager to kill people that it started on New Year's <laughs> Eve with <laughs> exactly. Betty White. Oh my gosh, you aren't kidding. I just looked up a list of celebrities over 80 years old who are still going strong. It hasn't been updated because Betty White is on there. Yeah. Jane Fonda, mm -hmm. 83 Bridget Bardot, 86, Yoko mm -hmm. Ono, 87, Sophia Loren, 86, Jack Nicholson, 83, Morgan Freeman, 83, Tom Jones, 80. If 2022 yeah. takes Morgan Freeman, it's on. Robert Redford. I don't know how, oh, yeah. but it's on. Robert Redford, Alan Alda. Uh, I mean, Morgan Freeman can't go. No. 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 Christopher Lloyd. Like, it's, you know, it was, it's taken two, 2022 is really leaning into the twos. It took... Two people at a time. It's taking two people at a time. <laughs> in a day. Yeah, in a two, day, yeah. Two people a day. Watch out, world, because it's coming. So who are the two? Meatloaf and Louis Anderson. No, yeah, are we taking bets which two people die next week? I, I could be anybody. Yeah. It could be. Honestly, I always thought the two pillars were um, Betty White and Keith Richards. Like, they just seemed like they're going to live forever. Especially Keith Richards. Keith Richards is on so much. His his uh, debt to income ratio on borrowed time is astronomical. Yeah, yeah. He there's no there's no conceivable reason that man should be alive. But yet he is. So if Betty White can go, I bet you Keith Richards is somewhere <laughs> scared. Yeah, right. <laughs> he's hiding. He's in, yeah. He's in a, like a panic room right now. Stay away. It's like a Final Destination. He just senses it coming. Oh, I just I just told my son about that. Um, oh, those movies. Those movies. Yeah, those, those were, are the only horror movies I truly enjoy. They were honestly the first couple were. Good. So that after, first one was phenomenal. First one was and great. Second one and the second one. Was the first one the 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 lumber truck? Yes. yes. So the, I mean, but and the, no sound. Oh man! And listen, for people of our generation around our age, that movie was very traumatic. You can't oh, yeah. you can't see a log. A truck or a train, and not be or, or um, driving behind something that could you can't drive behind something like that and not think of that movie. It was nope. so it it was burned into our brains so instantaneously. Man, those, were, those were so good. Oh wait, the first Final Destination was about the airplane. Yep. Yep. Okay, the second one is about the. See, truck. I thought the second one was better than the first one, but both good. Yes, and so last week we saw I saw Scream. And so my, my middle son wanted to watch the original again because he's already seen it because I'm a great parent. <laughs> it's been six, by the way. He's 11. And he hasn't shown... He but, Clementine, but Clementine has seen it and she's seven. So... <laughs> so <laughs> she loves Jason. She, uh, listen, I'm a, I'm a fantastic parent. Uh, but so we, we watched... He watched Scream again, and then we were talk. Uh, we talked about Final Destination. He watched um, a YouTube account called Kill Count. Yeah. Which actually made it. Yeah. Go ahead. 
you're gonna steal my identity. You're gonna be very disappointed. <laughs> that's that's why I that's why I don't care when uh, like someone's gonna steal my identity. Go ahead. Go for it. You've made my no, life a lot yeah, easier. Yeah, nobody will. I will be the first person in the history of identity theft where the person like returned everything on their own. Yeah. It's like we're with an apology my note. Yeah, my bad. So anyway, uh, he watched he watched Kill Count, which Kill Count actually made it into the new Scream, the act, that that actual YouTube account. Uh, but he watched so he watched the Kill Count for Final Destination. He watched all the kills and everything, and he was like. We're, that's the next one we're going to watch. So, but, nice. And then we talked about how Scream really reinvigorated that. Oh, yeah. that it, it kicked everything off. Um, Scream, Scream, Scream 2, Final Destination. Uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer. I Know What summer. You Did Last Summer. I think The Skulls. Um, oh, yeah. The, what was the movie about the aliens? The Faculty? Faculty. Faculty. That was great. They had a fucking great soundtrack too. Yeah, yeah. Did. Oh my god, that's got Frank like, Jansen in it, right? But that's it was all. I think Dimension was the the production company yeah. that that did those, and it just reinvigorated people's um, love affair with horror again. And now it then you get the you get Saw and you get um, what are some other? I mean, there was there was another Halloween that they they went back to uh, Halloween H two O. I think was yes, yeah. Yeah, it was a reinvigoration of the of the. Uh, and then those reinvig reinvigorate spoofs with scary movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a short time. Yeah, and but spoofs got awful. Yeah, that like that late Spartan. that mid to late nineties, uh, like mainstream horror, those were really good movies. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Final yeah. Destination really creeped my son out. Nice, but he. So we're, we'll watch it, and he'll never he'll be. Traumatized. You'll never be able to drive <laughs> behind anything again. You'll never you be go. able to fly a plane. Nothing. Speaking of traumatizing murders, it's time for a commercial break. Yeah. And we're going to hear from the monk who specializes in, tra in traumatic, traumatic, murders. traumatic murders. So we'll be right back, folks. Was that we? Was that timed out right? I can't, I just kind of decided we were going to commercial. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Did you read that um, Tom Brady is older than yeah. either any of the, Did one of you guys send that? Or? No, I saw it though. Oh, yeah, he's, Tom Brady's older than the other, the other three opposing NFC uh, head coaches. <laughs> the Muck, you have a long commercial. Hi! Hi! Hi. And welcome back. Welcome Hi. back. Hi. Hi. Welcome back. We're talking about Deep Space Nine. We're talking about Deep Space Nine. We've got two movies or two episodes to talk about today. We're going to start with a simple investigation. Here you go. Quark meets a beautiful woman named Arissa. And he's into her. But he's he there's something weird about her. Quark or Odo? Odo. Odo. Quark well Quark is into her. <laughs> yeah. Quark is yeah. in her, but she blows Does she have up. a pulse? Yeah, he's in yeah. her. So anyways, um, you know, Odo's in, so, somehow he's into this woman. He's never really been into a woman other than yeah, Kira Yeah, he got into her too. He was, yeah. So anyways, he's way into her, but she's on the station for some interesting things. She says she's there to get information related to her daughter, um, who has been, you know, who she gave up years ago. This is the truth. This lady is uh, working for the Orion Syndicate. She's a bad lady. She's a bad lady. But she wants out. She doesn't want to be bad anymore. She wants to be good. And um, she's uh, relying on Odo to help her become that way. Odo feels for her because Odo wants to feel her. And um, because Odo used to work for the Cardassians, and he regrets what he did. And he's kind of trying to make up for it. Well, he helps her along, and they, you know, there's this data chip with all this information on him. Big twist, though. That data chip actually is information on her. She's a double agent for the Iridians, who are trying to take down the Orion Syndicate, specifically the big boss, uh, Drain. They're trying to take him down. Um, so they come in. Uh, they give the crystal to the lady. She becomes her normal self again. 
Um, and oh wait, and before this though, her and Odo get in on, and he tells her he loves her, and blah blah blah. So, anyways, she becomes uh, her normal Iridian self again, gets her all of her memories back, and she you know visits Odo and says, you know what, I did love you. Part of me still loves you, but you know we can't be together, and you'll never ever ever see me again. And then she's she's gone, and they have enough evidence to take down Dream. Episode ends. It's gonna be really hard for me not to swear a lot during this. Do it. Just do it. Why? Because this episode should be called Odo Fucks. That's it. That's he... the whole thing. Yeah, it is. Like, because it's his first time. Yeah, I got I got a lot of questions on this too. It's his first. How group. does this work? Yeah, how, how does, how does that work? This, How does a changeling organ that, work? That. Or does? Or how did we all write that down essentially? Because <laughs> he does, does he. he he can't eat, right? He can't... Can he smell and taste? Um, I don't think he could, but, not, but so now can he, he feel? Smell he like, doesn't, can I'm he sure he can feel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he can feel. Like, what's his sense of touch like? Because I'm confused by how this works. I don't think we're supposed to think as much about it as we did. I mean, he is a changeling, so he could become well, whatever she he, wanted him to become. Well, he, and he could fill things up. Yeah. But here, here is the thing. <laughs> Disclaimer, this is a, I mean, there's no other way we can talk about this. So. Nope. No, because, nope. I mean, there really isn't because that's, but here, here's the thing. They've said, we, uh, they've made us think about these things because they, they have made it a point in the show at, at certain times to, to mention that he doesn't eat. So do, does he, does he taste or smell? He doesn't uh, have, er but these are real things. He doesn't have uh, human urges, but he was human for a little while. Oh, he but, had human so, urges. So, so, I know, but but I don't. I don't, guess I don't understand. Like, so did that change? So like, yeah, like what? So Odo one had none of that, right? He didn't eat. He didn't drink. He didn't ah, do anything. And now, now he then he goes human. Right. Now Odo two point does he? Yeah. Odo 2.0 is human. Odo 3.0. Now, what does, does does he take anything from his human existence? He, he said that in an episode where he goes, you know, I never appreciate this. I'm a, you know, the optics of drinking or something like that. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's because he could drink. Yeah, right. right. So but that's yeah. that's the thing. Like when he absorbed that little changeling baby, um, did uh, he became a changeling again? But is he in? Does he have human DNA still in him? That would be my question. Which right. allows him to enjoy these sensations that he never would. Because the way he reacted to this woman was even way different than Kira. Kira was more of an affection and a longing for her. This yes. was a lust for this woman. Yes. He lusted. This was very he was much into her different. from the get-go. Yeah. He lusted. And she, she was naughty and he wanted to be naughty. Listen, she was she was very, very attractive. Yeah. There was something and about her. It was there weird. was something about her. and um, She's from uh, Michigan, Birmingham. Oh, okay. Really? Oh, go well, figure. All right. I'll see you guys she's later. Six, yeah. She's sixty-six now. That's okay. So that means she was Three in more her years. That means yeah. she was in her forties. Yeah. Like that's impressive because she, she was she, she was, was gorgeous. She was absolutely gorgeous. And I th I don't know, but I don't know what it was, but like the sexual tension was it was very, there. It was very real. Yeah. Like it, it off like it, it came off screen. So I I, I think they did a, a really good job. Building with it? building it, but like, I don't know. He, yeah, it was it was lust and not what he had at least for initially. Ki yeah, for Kira. Um, well, yeah, he, you know, he wanted to you get a blow little, his goo. You get a little taste, and then you're addicted. Uh, it, dick. It, yeah, and uh, there was that one scene where like they were holding hands, and he like More? Ch changelinged into her, and she was. All into it, so I'm wondering what was happening there. She's, she definitely, I bet you she has a changeling kink. Now she does, now for she sure. Does, right? Like, how do you go back? Like, like you could have any man oh, 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 at this oh, point. Oh, oh, it also confirms that he banged the other changeling on his home planet. Oh, yep. Yes, we, he did say that. That we we suspected. I, I think during that, when we reviewed that episode, we said, we were like, did, did he just have did, sex with that woman? Does this need to be on Pornhub? Yeah. And apparently it does. Apparently it did. Apparently it did. What would changeling Pornhub would look like? Anything you wanted to look like, like. Very similar to regular. Yeah. A lot yeah. of goo. A lot of goo. You got some goo on your face. But, okay, so. Oh, God. How does, I'm going to hell. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not a fan of Odo with his shirt off, though. He looks good, though. Yeah. Like, good for him. Yeah, dude. 
Here's the thing. I mean, why you could look any way you want. Why wouldn't he be chiseled? Why wouldn't he look? Maybe he's a dead bad guy. That's not even a dead. He's not a. He doesn't care about looks. Yeah. Even though he chooses chooses the most attractive woman, he he sees in the book. Yeah, I know, right? Right. Hey, she's, I guess you know that's all, that's always my she, thing about Star Trek is right. Like we're supposed to be like super advanced and everything, and they always go for what the stereotypical look of beauty is. In these. See, I don't think she was stereotypical beauty. Oh, I think she, she's a little older, and, and this she and, was gorgeous. She was. She was, but she. I don't think she was stereotypical. Beauty. I don't think so at no. all. I think she was more um, mysterious. Re- refined. mysterious, refined, or an outlier. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. There was okay. just something about her. I'm like, okay, uh, Odo, I get it. It tracks. Well, it was the way she talked. Her now, way now, Lita. Yeah. That's yeah. That, that's where you're getting your stereotypical. Even, even, Dax I don't, is a special. I Dax is gorgeous, but I don't. I still don't even think that she is stereotypical for, because they they have used her uh, physicality in in a sexual way, but not overt. Not no overtly. Not they, crazy. They, they, they I. I at least with Dax, I feel like they respect the audience enough to allow them to be attracted to her, not push it. With Lita, it's just, but I mean, she's but a she's a double girl, so it's kind of what yeah, well, that is, but she works it, it is stereotypical. Yeah. I mean, she works for a friend. That's, That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's implied at that point. That right. You're going to you're gonna have those brains out to show things off. Yeah. Yeah. Can we talk about how Odo basically just ignores to... all he does, uh, like... You know, he's the freaking security officer of the station. He's both, like, you're breaking the law? I don't care. He's 40 or 50 years old. You're doing this wrong? I don't care. Yeah, you're hot, so we're going to make this work. Yeah, he's that, 40 that's, or 50 years old. That's, that's, yeah. that's how men are. And just busted the nut for the first time. But that's not Odo, which is, okay, I guess that plays into it, though, because this is the first time he's really felt that yeah, way. Yeah. He's lost control of his logical yeah, side. Yeah, it's, it's all, like, he's obsessed with this now, and it's all he can think about. Like, right this. away, he's like, why don't you live in my apartment? Yeah. <laughs> It's safe there. <laughs> well, that, you can first see of all, in my like, that, that was nice that he took her into one quarters and said, all right, you're going to be target. We'll beam you somewhere else. Even, though it, even yeah. if it was his quarters. He was still doing Odo stuff. Yeah, yeah, he was still doing his job. Yeah. I'd love not, the not whole... to the level he should have been, but... No. Oh, he took his job above and beyond. He oh, did. Yeah. He did. And inside and around. <laughs> yeah, that's actually <laughs> true. Yeah. That tracks. That tracks. Mm. Uh, I love... Uh, and he can... You can just wave things. Come on, dude. That's not even fair. I know. Well, after you've not, had a changeling, how do you go back? Yeah, it doesn't. How I think do you would, go back? I guess everybody would probably have a changeling kink then. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, any side of the coin you're on, that changeling could do anything. To and, you. Anything. Would just. It's like, what do you want? Just tell me what you want. You can have whatever you want. Literally, whatever. Yeah. Like, you literally, want. I could be whatever you want. No judgment here either. I'm a changeling, so if you want me to be a donkey, I can be a donkey, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. <laughs> and it can move anyway, anywhere. You want me to be Jason Momoa? How is how is Odo not Momoa. getting more ass? I, because he hasn't been interested. Yeah, he, he was he was what, iffy about that one girl that flirted with him like a season or two ago. Yeah. And then I think maybe the human thing kind of said maybe I can let myself out a little bit. Yeah. Know. Care about that? Care about that ass? It's it's, an, it's a, it is fascinating. This is the first time we've talked about this part of Odo, but it's also I love the reaction of the bridge crew, especially Worf. They're getting, gossipy, yeah. getting yeah. all pissed yeah. off about it. But it's really because he wants to be part of the conversation. Right. He was yeah. he was feeling out left out. And then the captain comes in and instead of yelling at him, they're like, "Yeah, he was with a woman last night." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah. damn yeah. right he was." Yeah, he was. Like that was awesome. That was pretty well yeah, done. Good for Odo. And in that scene, they kind of show that maybe Kira was a little jealous. Yeah, she they was. did, yeah. and they played it up a tiny, tiny bit. A tiny bit, which I appreciated not being overt. Right. Yeah. Right. Because because there there is something there. But is it? I don't. But oh, there's a chemistry. Absolutely. There there is, and, and I know that she's in the relation in the relationship, and hasn't over, you know outwardly expressed romantic interest in Owen. Yeah. But subtly, she kind of has. So, I agree. when I looked at that scene, though, I didn't see it more as jealousy. I view it very similar to, like, Odo all of a sudden realizing he has these human emotions and feelings now for this woman. It's Kira all of a sudden realizing, oh, wait, Odo, he's available? Like, he is like that? Oh, that's oh, I can see him a different way. Like, I never thought about him that way. Maybe it's a realization that, oh. Okay, because I see what you're saying, because she may have, because he's always, like, the human interest in None of that interests me, yeah. None of that interests me, then... 
he does this, and she's like, wait a second. Wait a second, maybe this guy. I could have had a changeling. I could have had a changeling this entire time? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, he can be, like, my, my former lover who died. What was his name? Vedic? Shikar. Sh no, 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 Shikar's a new one. Vedic, uh, Beryl. Beryl. Who, he can look like Beryl for me. Oh, I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to do that, though. No, that's creepy. That would be, that would be the part, though. That would be the part of the, the changeling kink that you would really have to tread lightly on, is when... They start requesting you look like other people. So there's a there's. Have you seen the boys on uh, the first season? Okay, so in the second season there is actually a changeling and like the guy who basically is an evil Superman. He he kills this one person in the first season, but he's super into her. So he like abducts a changeling guy and he makes her makes him <laughs> be her, and he's and like constantly he's like you're good enough, you're amazing, and like just. Talking him up, it, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. Because the guy's terrified of him because he's like Superman. Yeah. He's like the strongest superhero there is. I can't remember his name. It's a good show. What was the B-plot? I don't think there was one. There was no B-plot this episode. This was yeah. the whole plot. Odo, Odo Fox takes up the whole A-plot. Yeah. So I watched these episodes with Eli, and that was super awkward, actually. Yeah, how, okay. He was into the episode. I mean, he, yeah. He, yeah, he enjoyed it. He looked at you and said, Dad, how does Odo nut? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he liked it. I mean, we enjoyed the episode. So, uh, sad ending, though. Odo yeah, that's what I wrote is uh, Odo, uh, poor Odo. Poor yeah, Odo. that's that. That would be rough. How do you, as Arissa, or that's not even a real name, but how do you go back to your husband now after something like that, right? Like, I understand she had no clue who she was. This, Do you not tell him what, what happened? I, I appreciate your consistency because this is very much a mirror universe type thing. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And, okay. and you're you're very consistent in your uh, in in your uh, outlook on the mirror universe and this. Whereas I'm going to be consistent and say that I how why would what would be the difference? Who cares? So you, I, she, well, she didn't know like, who she was. She didn't know like who my, she was. I feel like my partner would deserve to know. What if? What if she has some sort of changeling disease now that she passed? Like changeling gonorrhea. Oh, you can't do Odo like, like that. Change Lydia. Change Midia. Change Midia. Like Chlamydia. But yep, like, yeah, we got it. We got couldn't it. you just not? I mean, could he's a changeling. Couldn't you just not have that disease? I don't know. You could. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. that We've seen a lot of changelings do. get really sick in this series so yeah. far. And die. Know. Yeah, and die. So like, well, that's changing. It didn't really die. It's living in Odo now. Yeah. Well, that's part of the problem. It it was yeah. dying, so it went into Odo. So it's like, oh, he probably, he probably actually does have a bunch of like transmittable diseases. Yeah, but he <laughs> merged with all of them on the planet. They all got into a goo pile. That's oh yeah, he's got, going on. they had like a, they all threw their keys in the bowl and just <laughs> went to town. I where where is this place? Because I'm. Looking to take a trip. Gamma Quadrant somewhere. All right. It's Miami. I'm going to Google Maps. It's map. Miami. It's Miami. I'm going to Google, Google Maps. I have an idealized quadrant. version of Florida at home. Maybe not ideal. Um, so, yeah, I go back. Like, I feel like you have to tell your partner. It didn't mean anything to you. Like, it wasn't yeah, you, I mean, but, like, yeah, just I'm, so I'm, you know. Not, I'm not an advocate. I'm not an advocate for not saying anything. I'm just saying I, I would, I don't think it's necessarily what, would, what I think I think your partner would have to be a bit understanding that you were in this predicament and well yeah you, it wasn't they knew you were it wasn't like you chose to do this you were they knew they had to know that you were some kind of government agent you're gonna yeah. be gone for multiple years yeah and if I were to ask like I put myself in that in, in Arissa's spouse's spot if I were to ask what'd you do I'm opening a whole can of worms on myself that I might not want to know. Opening a whole can of worms on yourself? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you might You're have... You're asking for trouble at that point, and, and yeah. that's probably on you at that point. Yeah, how much, how much does her husband actually know about her profession? Exactly, and if she's a spy, probably not much. Right, unless unless they do have an open uh, communication, an open line of communication where they tell each other everything about um, her job. Yeah, right. Then I would say something. Otherwise, it's like, work related. I had a change, and you got to figure some shit out because yeah. nothing's ever going to be like that again. Right? Right? Exactly. 
Good episode, though. Like, yeah, it really was. Not it, Is there much to it? I don't know. There's not really much to it. It's really just a character study, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, that's what these Odo episodes have, have really become. A, a, a deep dive character study on on Odo and, and how he has progressed from 100% changeling to human to now some sort of hybrid. I, it, I feel like he's some sort of hybrid. I now. do too. He's more understanding at least. Yeah. He's a different, yeah, he's a different character over the last couple episodes and I think they're intentionally doing that. Maybe they're not. I don't know. I'm going to have to look up some show notes afterwards. We're going to find out. Yep. I'm not going to look at them now because that would be on show and I don't do research while on the air. Check YouTube out. Yeah. I'll he's, fact check you there. Yeah, he's been doing re- research this whole time. I have, he's that's on, true. He's on Changing Pornhub right yeah. now. <laughs> Changing Hub. All right. Down. Episode two, business as usual. Quack. He's running up the large debts because that's what Quark does. He's not really that great with money. Let's be honest with it. Uh, his cousin uh, shows up, Gala, and he offers him a way out. Hey, let's sell some guns together. So... Uh, you know, here's the thing, though. You can't actually sell guns on Deep Space Nine, but Quark has a bunch of hollow seats, so they can use that as a way to sell the guns. So Quark agrees, uh, starts making some cash money. He's good at it. It becomes quite profitable. And actually, here's the thing. The Bajorans actually step in and be like, leave him alone, because we got some guns from this guy that he's working with, and they really helped us against the Cardassians. So, the Cardassians. So, the Cardassians. Uh, it helped against them, too. It would. Yeah, it would help. So, diseases. here's the thing. Quark's making some big money, but his friends can't stand him anymore. Everyone on the station doesn't want anything to do with him. He's a freaking arms dealer. They're, they're disgusted by him. They don't want him. Even Cisco's like, I'm done with you, bro. I'm done with you. I backed you up. No more. No, it's more even Dax than anything else. Well, yeah. Dax too, right? So, um, you know, Quark. Um, you know, Quark is like, get over it. Until he meets with this one general Nosek, who's like, I want to kill twenty-eight million people, and yeah. uh, Gala and Haggith are all in on it. So, um, Quark is like, no, I don't want any part of this. So Quark organizes a way where he's gonna basically get. Uh, Gala or uh, Nosek and uh, his enemy in the same room together. I don't know. I don't know if his intention was this, but they basically all murder each that other. That was his intention. Okay, I thought his intention was that they would make up or something. I don't know. I don't remember. Anyways, I think he cared. Anyways, they all get murdered, and that's how Odo gets out of it. Because if he would have just tried to quit, he would have been killed. Quark, Quark. Sorry. Um, and uh, after a while, after a while, everyone's okay with him now. They're fine. Except for the fact that Cisco says you gotta pay for the damage. Meanwhile, oh gosh, I gotta sneeze. Mute, so mute, 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 mute. Oh gosh, I almost died. I almost <laughs> died. Everyone Bless almost you. died. I tried to get to the mute, but I couldn't get there in time. Oh gosh, there's, it's backed up. I, I I'm dying. I didn't hear it in here. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, meanwhile, Odo, uh, Odo is trying to care for his new son Yoshi, and uh, Yoshi won't won't stop crying unless. Okay. Jesus Christ. O'Brien. Odo has a kid now! O'Brien is caring for Yoshi, but Yoshi's in that phase where he needs to be held or rocked all the time in order to sleep. And it's just, he can't get any sleep. So he carries him around all day, even taking him to work. And he's like, it's cool, I can do my job with the baby. And and, and they're like, Cisco's like, no, bro, get this baby out. Because all these people are ogling your baby and they won't work because they think the baby's so cute. So anyways, the baby finally settles down when war folds him. And then when war folds the baby, he goes to sleep. The end. All right. So useless B-plot. Yes. Other than showing how adorable Yoshi is. Because Yoshi is the cutest baby. Well, in a different layer of Worf, too, I think, is a kind of a cool thing. Like showing Worf. Well, it's nice that him acknowledging he's a terrible dad. Yeah, finally. Like, it's taken him long enough. He is a terrible dad in the you next have generation. No idea. You have no, he any chance he can get to ditch his child, he ditches his child, yeah. and he is so mean to his kid. Just a terrible bother to Alexander. Um, what was that weird beep sound? We got a reorder notification on Alexa over there. Okay, nice. I was very confused. Nice. nice. Okay. Well, anyways, um, just very fascinating uh, that to see Warp like that. But yeah, that B story sucked. It, was, um, it just had no, 100% I, filler. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what it was. Uh, uh, it was filler. a filler. It was bad sitcom. You know what? And you know why? It I needed think, a laugh track. 
It did. It we needed that as a filler, though. Left, right? It needed that as a filler, because for, for as interesting as a plot this was with Quark, there wasn't a lot of meat to it that I really... There wasn't really much... In fact, I would say, like, as my son and I were watching this episode, the first, like, 20 minutes were like, this episode is kind of boring. And then it picks kind of up a little bit at the end. But then, yeah. You know... It was... It was... It's a nice dilemma for Quark. It, it yeah. is. And and then so then my son and I were sitting there. I'm like Eli, what do you think? Like this guy's selling guns. Like is that a bad thing? And he's like, well, n- no, because they're not necessarily being used for killing. And I said, well, what's the purpose of a gun, bro? Like shoot targets <laughs> to defend yourself. They're yeah. they're being used for defense. Yeah, for defense. We're right. Shooting the bank all the time. But that was that was Quark's argument, right? They're using it for defense, yeah, right? Right. And and this is where it becomes a tough argument. They're selling to the Bajorans. They were, uh, they were at one point in time. Um, no, he wasn't selling them, selling it to them out of any moral high ground. He was selling it to them because he's like, he saw the tides of the war changing, and he realized that they would be good allies to have. Yeah, the, the long term benefits. The long term benefits outweighed. Um, but yeah, you don't sell the guns to the Bajorans; they get slaughtered by the Cardassians, right? Yeah. So is there a point where it's okay to do something like that? Is there a point where where it's okay to sell versus not sell? Like where this other guy's like, I'm going to slaughter 28 million other people. And then they brought her in, the other one, and she was going to basically do the same thing yeah. to him. So what's the what's the line? Sell to both sides and get rid of each other. Man, you make all the profit. Exactly. Let, let, let them sort it out. A net zero casualty because they're both killing each other. Bam. Yep. Yeah. I like the one argument that, who was it, uh, the cousin made to, to Quark about the scars. He's like, there's millions of them out there. If one goes out, no one cares. No one will notice. Because you're so detached from it, it's so far away. It's, But now Quark's in a situation where he's personally involved in it, and that changes yeah. things. And the guy who played Gala was great, I thought. Yeah? I thought he was great, the guy who played his cousin. I don't like yeah. the way he talked. I, thought was, I, I I initially was kind of irritated with it, but then I then I kind of like that it grew on me over the course of the episode. And this was the cousin that had tried to kill him in that one episode where yep. they went back in time. I had to look it up because I initially I thought it was Jeff Combs that played him. Oh really? It I just mean, it just looked. You wouldn't sound. be wrong yeah. in most things. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay, he's played basically every other uh, every other like side character in this show. It's probably him anyway. So, but it wasn't. No. But it it it, it kind of. It, the, whoever played him played it with a Jeff Combs, uh, a little aura to it. There's a vibe. I get it. I, I get what you're saying. He because he has that vibe to him every time he portrays a character. You can you can tell when it's when Jeff it's Holmes. Jeff. Yeah. Right. So, I. It, are we are we still? I, to, Terry, I just Terry Farrell, John Zia Dax. <laughs> Have we let's, watch this, let's watch this episode going, damn! We still haven't finished talking about our gun selling thing, but okay. Yeah. You're right. That's a well, good... you guys took dead air, so I'm like, ah. Yeah. Just, well, I'm just going to fill that with Dax appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, there's nothing wrong with that, I guess. No, not at all. I, I thought this episode was okay. Yeah, it's okay. It didn't really get, I mean, I guess... some fun things to the, it. The arms dealing is, I guess, the central question, like... The, the morality of, of arms dealing, right? Yeah. Or when, does it, when does it become problematic, right? Uh, yeah, where's the line? Because when Quark heard the 28 million, that's when he was right. like, wait a second. And before that, he was he was all in on it. Yep. it, was make, it was, he was paying off his debtors. He was uh, making pro- He was starting to make profit. He was get, everything was starting to come up millhouse for him. And, and then by the end of the episode, he was back to square one because he was in debt because yeah. of the, 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 the room that he had to repair. Yeah, so... Right but yeah, once 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 they once they I guess for lack of a better term humanized it with the the the, the vast number of lives that would that were going to be eliminated, or or that were going to be used against these guns. Then he starts questioning like, what am I doing? Right. But so so for Quark there is there is a line in the sand, but I don't I don't know. I don't know if he could even tell you that's exactly of, where it is. I, I think it's I like. more of like a you'll know it when you, like you'll know it when you know it. It's like pornography. Yeah, you'll you know it. You you'll know it when you know you it. You can't really describe it, but you know it when you see it. I, um, I, you, I can describe sure it. You 
can describe. I don't know. There was a quote from a movie that said there. Some, there was a quote like that. We just watched a, a DS9 porno. That's right. We did. We did. And somehow they made it PG. I don't know how they did it. Didn't feel PG. It did not feel PG. Now, I felt dirty watching that. I yeah. wanted more. <laughs> of course you did. Well, so yeah. back to the back to the <laughs> art. Back to the arms deal. I got a short going on in my mic. Yeah. Oh, in my, yeah, in these. So back to the arms dealer thing. Um, if arms dealers ceased to exist, there wouldn't be a problem in the first place. You wouldn't need to sell to the Bajorans because the Cardassians might not have weapons. So well, say, Cardassians, Cardassians can develop their own. Yeah. You're, you're leaving that. You're, all, all your weapons would just be in house then. Yeah. Yeah, I, I suppose. There are people that make more creative arms. It's like the Tony Stark argument in, in the Avengers, right? Um, he created all these weapons that killed people when they were supposed to save people. And then in part two, there's also the guy who was the other arms dealer. And then there's, you can get weapons anywhere. So that's, so that's the thing. Like, if it's not for Quark doing it, someone else is going to fill that hole. And Quark is more moralistic, so maybe Quark should stay in the game because Quark has lines where other ones, like the person he may worked not. with, didn't. Right. right. So, so, I, I guess I, I guess you want you do you do probably want a, a little bit of morality in your arms dealer. <laughs> I want I want arms I want a Mister Rogers style arms dealer. You know, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Let's not blow it up. Let's, it's let's a beautiful see. day in the neighborhood. Take these. Can you? Would you like to buy these AKs? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood until I eliminate the neighborhood. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Anything else from this movie? Yeah. So, production-wise, interesting thing. Did you guys see it was directed by Sidij al Yes. Yeah. Which is um, Alexander Sidij's real name. Yeah. I thought that was interesting that for a director, he went with his real name, and then... I it, that, that, is, that is interesting. Maybe right. it's maybe it was an intent an intent to differentiate himself from the... like So people would not be like... Oh gosh, it's another uh, person from the show directing. I don't know. I don't think that's it. I just thought it was. I just thought it was an interesting move. I was, I was curious to yeah. know more. I don't know. Did you notice um, the high quality ex- high quality of the explosions when they were they were shooting the guns at the in the um, oh yeah, I, yeah you're right yeah they were, they were they were like hot like kind of high quality yeah they looked nice it, it was well, house week man. No, I'm just I'm talking so, about like the explosions I themselves. Know. It was it just looked like they had production value. Production value in more so than in previous seasons where they've blown things up and it didn't look as quite as pretty for right. a better word. Yeah. Word. Worm. 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 Worm, son. Worm. Mm. I got nothing else. Yeah. I, I'm trying I'm trying to think if anything else jumped out in this episode. The 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 B like we said, the B plot was not much of anything. Um, I did. I did like that he was playing darts with holding the kid. Oh yeah, exactly. To play darts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I think we've take, all been take there. the kid to the bar, play darts. I think we've all been there when we had our kid in our arm. We were probably doing something that wasn't yeah conducive to having a kid in your arm. Yeah, you know, like, eh, I should probably put this kid down. Yeah. But no. no. I like the name Yoshi too. Do you? Yep. You like the Mario reference? I do. Yeah. Yoshi. Yoshi. <laughs> That's not Yoshi. That's not Yoshi. What is that? I don't know. Creepy. Sh- Yoshi. Doesn't Yoshi say his own name? Yeah, but it's it's more high pitched and it's more. Yoshi. Like, uh, maybe, maybe can we end this episode? Can, this episode? can we end Yoshi? Yoshi. Oh my God. Yoshi. Yoshi. Okay. This, <laughs> this is this is why iPods is not. Bringing us on as members. Wait, what? We're gonna be members? No, no. we're not. Oh, we're not. No, gonna they're be not members. doing it because you're creepy ass <laughs> shit. You do. They're like, what? 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 It's snowing. Yeah, it's been so. I've been, I've been mesmerized by the snow for yes. like the last it, fifteen minutes. Oh, it looks so pretty. It does. Did you know every snowflake is different than the others? So let's rate the episode. Yes, please. <laughs> A simple investigation. Well, think I'm good. Uh, I'm can, a, on our social medias, can you <laughs> please send Nick hate mail? Yeah. yeah. Can I? Can I? Can I give this a six point nine? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, it, it'll be, 
That will be allowed. For only, this. only for this episode. Yeah, we allow it. Permitted. Thank that, you. That's the only time that'll ever be allowed. Sustained. Uh, <laughs> because I would probably. Which give, is what Odo did in the bedroom. <laughs> I, would, I, would probably, I would probably give it a six point five or a seven, but I six point nine. I respect that. I. I don't know what I want to give it. I'm gonna um, give it. I'm gonna give it a five point nine. You can't do that. Yeah, I can't. No. 5.5. 5. Okay. I, I think I was going to do 6.5, I think. I think yeah. I think really? I thought it was that good. I enjoyed it. Like, you, I don't even know if you actually think it's that good. It just could be the number that you wanted to do. Well, I what? thought the story I, was good. I probably would have gone 6.5. Okay. Okay, that works. Okay, that works. But 6.9 just always sounds a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's great. It's great. 6.9. 6.9, of course. Yes. You know, when the I was... Ratings. It's always a lot of fun. You know, I was in high school, I... Um, I Mutual fun. When I was in high school, I played the trombone. Yeah, you did. And everyone was getting AOL. You had to have a good screen name, so mine was Tromboner69. Of course it was. Of course. Super that's, mature. That's Six, right. Yeah. That, that 100%. You know that's a good screen name. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know that's a good screen name. That's, uh, for AOL, for an AOL instant messenger screen name, that's... That's I mean, tops. that's top tier. That's top tier. So very mature I was at, at those days in my life. And he, that was last week. I <laughs> know. Honestly, that could track, too. I mean, it's possible. All right. Uh, arms dealing. What is this? Uh, Nick has been really harsh on these episodes lately. Uh, what is it? Business as usual? Yeah, business as usual. I'm going to go... I'm going 5.0. Yeah, I think that's where I'm at. Hold on. We just had it in air. It just stopped. But that doesn't mean we lost the episode. Hold on. Give me a second. It just aired. Uh, let me go to audio. Technical difficulties. Yeah, hold on. Let me go in.
happens when you get when a burglar comes? What do you think a burglar?